What's up guys? Today I'm going to show you all how to change a coil pack on an outboard motor. So here's the coil pack we're going to be changing today. And you can see this is the lead that goes to the spark plug. This is the lead that goes to the power pack. And this is the ground that comes out of the back of the coil and grounds through this bolt into the motor. Now the first thing we want to do is disconnect our spark plug lead from the coil pack. Sometimes they're a pain to get off. And we're going to lay that to the side. Now you have this lead right here that goes to the power pack. But you can see it's zip tied up here so we're going to have to cut that zip tie. Make sure you don't snip the wires. Okay, now it has this little holder right here that holds the plug. So we're going to pop it out of there and you just pull them apart. Now there's two pins in here and we're going to have to push one of these pins out. Now you can pull on it a little bit and see that if you yank on it, you're probably going to pull the connector off. So I'll show you all a trick to get that out. Now here's the trick to get it out. Get you an old nail or something like this and stick it down in here and push against the connector to push it out. You can see it pops right out and then you can pull it. So we're going to lay that to the side. Lay this to the side. Alright, now we need to take these bolts out to get this thing off. So we're just going to loosen up the bottom one. Loosen up the top one. Now you can see how it grounds to the motor block. It just goes through here and it grounds into the motor block. Now you can see on this coil pack these leads are really frayed. That's really bad. I mean they can short out against each other. It's just really bad. You want to replace them especially if they're frayed like this. Now I'll show you all another coil pack that has even more damage to it. You can see this coil pack is oozing this sticky substance out of it and what happens is when these things get really hot over time it's like an insulator it's inside of them and it oozes out and it can cause the coil to fail or short out inside now if you see this stuff oozing down the side of your motor then it's definitely a telltale sign that it's time to replace these things see what happens is your motor will run good at idle and then once you get it up to temperature, it'll start misfiring. You're like, what the heck is causing this problem? It was running good. It was running good. Well, when these ignition components heat up, they tend to fail. So it might run well when the motor's cold, but once it heats up, it shorts out inside. But if you see this stuff oozing out of them, it's definitely a good idea to replace them. All right, so let's get this new coil on here. So you can see our new coil, it doesn't have any of that sticky stuff oozing out of it. The leads aren't frayed, of course, but there's no corrosion on this pin. It's nice and new. So let's put this thing on. So now we're going to take our little ground lead and put it on this bolt, stick it in there. Now on these ground leads, and these bolts, if they're really corroded, you're going to want to make sure to clean out the threads, clean them up, and get them nice and pretty because uh, 
they won't ground good at all and that can cause problems too they really need to be nice and pretty for it to work properly so we're just gonna snug them up don't get them too tight now you might have to hold the back of the connector when you tighten it up so it don't spin Get this bottom one tight. Okay, now that it's put back on, you can see we got to run this lead to the power pack. Now when you do this, you can run it behind or run it in front or whichever you prefer. I'm going to run it in front because I'm cool like that. So it's a good idea to get some dielectric grease and stick it on here. That'll help it go in the hole a lot easier. But what you do is you just stick it in and you get it to a point where it won't go anymore. Then you get your nail. And put it right on the back of that connector, not the wire, the connector. And you push her in there and go a little bit at a time and check it against the other one and make sure they're even. You want to be careful you don't nick the wire. So they're both even now. What we're going to do is run it back up here and just plug the connector back into it. So they're both even now. We got to plug them back up. And you can see that one side's flat on this connector. So you just stick the flat side, match them up, stick them together, and just put it back in its holder. Then you get your spark plug wire, sticker back on there. Sometimes you have to twist them, but you want to make sure it's nice and tight on there. And then just make sure it's in its holder or whatever. And I'm going to zip tie this right here because when you put these things on here, you want to make sure that when you put the cover on, it don't snag. It can snag on these leads and break them. So you want to make sure that they're nice and secure. So I'm going to put a little zip tie on that. So get your little zip tie sticker on there. And just make the wires nice and pretty. I mean, you can run it behind if you want, but I just ran it in front because that's how it was. Well, there you go. The coil's done. That was easy. Another word on these uh, coils, you can buy them used. If you check on eBay and stuff, you can buy them used. And a lot of guys, when they part out motors, they'll sell a whole set of them. And if you have a V6 or something like that, and I mean, all of them are leaking that goo, it's probably a good idea to just replace them all. Now, if the guy says they work well when you buy them, I mean, you can probably get away with it. But if you only have like, you know, one or two that's bad and the rest look perfect, you can buy new ones. I mean, they're only like 30 bucks or whatever. I'll put a link in the description where y'all can find uh, new coils and which ones you need, the part number and everything. But diagnosing the problem is the hardest part. Typically what you do is you hook a timing light up to it and say this one doesn't have any spark or it's misfiring. What you do is you swap it up here and swap this one down here. Now, if the no spark or the misfire follows it, then that's your problem. You should also switch the leads up here too. But say, okay, we got a misfire on this one. We swap it up here, swap this one down here. Well, the misfire follow it, now it's on this one. Then we know the coil's bad. And you definitely wanna swap the leads when you do this to rule out the power pack being bad. But if the misfire doesn't follow it, 
and stays right here, then you know the power pack's probably bad. And to test the power pack, you switch it side to side and see if it follows it. If the no spark or the misfire follows to the other side, then you know you got a problem with your power pack. Now it could be something further up the line like the timer or the trigger base, whatever you want to call it, or the stator, but that's how you determine what the problem is. You go from the easiest problem to the hardest problem to fix and you just rule it out. Process of elimination and you just keep testing stuff until you isolate the problem. You say, okay, this coil is bad, I'm gonna replace it. There's no sense in throwing hundreds of dollars of parts at an outboard when you can diagnose the problem cheap and easy and replace the part that has failed. A lot of guys, they'll just buy all new coil packs, put it all on. There's no sense in doing that. If you can figure out that it's one coil pack or one power pack or both, just replace them. There's no sense in throwing parts at an outboard when you can properly diagnose the problem. It just takes a little bit of time. So there you go, guys. That's how you change a coil pack on an outboard. This is an Evinrude 140. Like and subscribe for more outboard vids if y'all enjoyed this video. Later.